see you when you have some more. Apologies for me being a mute for the first few seconds because uh, my dad interrupted me. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure if that's in there or what not, but whatever. Okay, so now we're going to the colors. And this is going to be advanced coloring. There's going to be two types of coloring. I'm going to be doing coloring with manual coloring and changing to the actual colors. And then I'm going to do cell shading kind of style. So I'll be doing that after I'm done doing the other type. And so called what we did last time. I did the eyes. We blocked in everything. I showed three different ways to block in the colors. And that's pretty much it. It's very simple and not too complicated. And we also did the outline. So that took a little time, but it was worth it. So I'm going to open advanced colors. And you see that we still have all the files in here as a copy. I'm going to turn off the black background for now. And I'm going to do this the manual way. So I'm going to click the layer. I'm going to click this here, which is preserved opacity. And this will lock it so that way I do not color outside of the drawing. Like, for example, I'm going to take this color, I'm going to darken it a little bit. And then I can use this for shading. Well, if it feels like doing that right now. Oh, that's because I'm on the OB command. So as I take the hair, I'm going to put preserved opacity. And then I can do this. And it's not going to go outside of the outline. Because I already made it so it's only going to be where the main base colors already were. So yeah. That comes in handy so that way you don't have to worry that you're going to go outside of the lines when you're trying to do detailed colors and so forth. And so I'm just going to really quickly do that to all of these layers. That way it's preset for when I have to deal with them. Alright then. So since I already started with the hair, I'm going to continue with the hair. And I just picked a slightly darker shade of the hair color in order to do this. And there's many different ways you can add, which is like shading texture or detail lines. For instance, you can take this, sort of go like this with the hair. Kind of add lines to make it have this sort of shape. And that there's hair that's going around in the shapes of the bun. You can do the opposite too to kind of like make less of the darker lines and more of the brighter lines. And so that's kind of just some ways you can do the hair. And then another way, thing you can do is when you do that, you can take the blur tool, make it a bit small, and sort of lightly blur one of the edges. And it'll make it look like it goes downwards and into the hair. Kind of just tucks inwards and not completely outwards. Mm, it's just like interesting 3D effects. It's like you can learn to do a lot of interesting effects by using just the blur tool alone. So it's good to mess around with it. And then, for example, if I want to add a slight highlight color add a little bit of color to it because I don't want it to be pure black and black and black. You can do it like this. And so this is like the highlight color that sort of goes through the hair. And you can just do it as calm strokes and just try to imagine they're like little strands of hair on their own. And you can always go back and add more of the dark color and just go back and forth with it. And it's just, you just, it's like it takes a little time, but it's the time, the time is always going to be worth it when you do this. So don't be afraid to spend some time on it. And then I'm going to take the brighter purple again. I'm going to 
re-add this into the hair and sort of just keep shaping this little bun here and this is take a realistic take on a hair bun and not typically the more anime style take on a hair bun because it's just how I want to do this particular shading today and so when we're done I'm going to show you the alternate which is a bit more like an anime style but you can see that it gives the hair bun a lot of texture and it's like you don't need to consider that done yet either you can add another layer of highlight and sort of just brighten it up even more and kind of just add a little bit of a shine that goes through the hair and to go to the deepest amount of shine you could probably do is of course going to be a really really bright color like this but you want less of it so you can turn the opacity down and sort of just make it the little center finish color Yeah, it's not perfect because I'm not really the type of perfectionist person but you can see it kind of gets the shape and colors you wanted to do with it. And of course, you can always go back and redarken anything and just keep going back and forth until you're pretty much satisfied with it. And for me, this is about good enough to be satisfied. So, yeah. So, that's one take on doing the hair buttons. And then you can do the same on the other side, which again, it'll take a little time of going back and forth. But yeah, it's like if you want to add this extra type of depth, then it's worth taking that extra time to do it. And so this time, since the hair is the other way, you gotta curve it so that it's going in this direction. And remember that since this is a different angle, a lot of the dark areas is going to be around here. And then the brighter areas is going to be out here. But since I made it kind of like so the shine is coming like this, you're going to have a little bit of shine going in this direction. So I'm going to re-add some of these lines. And sort of make it so that the dark is on the bottom and more towards the hair than on the top. Okay, just typing a little bit. I assume Tamaki accidentally got dropped out of the Google Hangout. Didn't notice that, but that's alright. We can we'll get her back in a minute since that kind of thing, technical issues happen. But, uh, happens to everyone. Mm, so I'm just gonna work really quick on adding the light bit of color here. Sort of uh, giving it a bit more of like a purple raven black than just a pitch black. Because pitch black can be a little bit too dark, honestly. And you don't want it to be too dark and you want it to have a little bit of color because Surprisingly, black doesn't look always good being just straight blacks and grays. It's good to add some color into them so that way there's a bit of a mixture of the two. And so, yeah, I'm gonna bring some of that black out this way. And then we're gonna add the brighter one. Which is gonna be this one. And we're gonna add that. To here, and we're gonna make sure we make add the shines more in this direction, because that's where the shines are shiny. And then we're gonna add the really really bright shines. Here we and go, back now. Hey, welcome back. I gotta readjust the volume again, but that's okay. It resets every time you pop back in, which is kind of silly. Well, this last time wasn't my fault. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't your fault. That's okay. It was at and versus fault. <laughs> yeah, eh, pretty much. So yeah, I'm doing a different type of hair texture. Like, it's not exactly anime style. It's kind of a bit more 
on borderline realistic, but it's like I'm just showing that there's different ways you can do hair. Oh, and so I'm kind of doing the light, long type of hairstyle. It's not easy to do. Especially when it takes you're a, a beginner lot of like I was when I tried doing that. Yeah, it takes a bit of time, so you got to be comfortable with it. And so to me, it's like this one's going to be the fancy coloring, and then I'm going to do afterwards, like I said, a different alternate take on the coloring so that it's a bit more simplified. Because like to me, this is going to be like the one I would post on DeviantArt as like a gift art. You know what I'm saying? But the other one is going to be one that you can use as reference to practice and kind of learn it. Yeah, makes sense. Right. Yeah, yeah, you see, it's like it looks nice. And it just takes a little time to make it look that way. Yeah, not easy. But in the end, when you finish it up, it looks actually really nice. Mm -hmm. And so, gotta continue doing that onwards. And you can see I kind of reference back to the hair bun to get the darker colors. Or like over here, I can get the darker colors because this is all colors for the hair. And I locked all the layers so that way this is only going to affect the hair. Okay. So it's not going to like go into anything else or mess up anything. And so yeah. And the whole thing is kind of just to think of the hair as like 3D shapes. And that's why you got to add curves and bumps and whatever. And so just try to follow it. As if it was real hair. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not exactly real hair. It's kind of like you're trying to imagine it as if it was real hair. And so that's how you're going to add the lines. And again, it's like I like to do the dark lines first because I'm a bit backwards. And then you can add lighter lines as you kind of get more into shaping the hair. Is it weird that I still use the reference picture that I gave you as my go-to Avi? Yeah, it's alright, because <laughs> it's like everyone has their own, and it's like the first one you do is always going to be the one you really like because you worked hard on it, or whoever works hard on it. And then it's like you can practice and redraw it in your own way. That's how I like to see it. Because I'm like, I'd always prefer to do my own art whenever I have a profile thing than to use someone else's art because I'm like, I, it's like I don't want to, it's like a gift, it's nice that it's a gift, but I'm like, I don't want to use something that belongs to someone else because I don't like people assuming the wrong idea, you know? Because again, people are people and sometimes they assume the wrong types of things and I'm like, no, that wasn't me, that was someone else. <laughs> Yeah. It's kind of like what I did on my Tumblr page. I used that picture that you gave me for the whole ask me thing. <laughs> I don't even use that Tumblr. Mm -hmm. Anyway. You can see it's like it takes a lot of time because you're trying to do individual strands. Mm -hmm. So it's like this particular style, it's like a lot of people would do a bit of a mix smash of the anime mixed with a little bit of realism. And so it's like it all really depends on what you want to personally do. And it takes a little time to do that kind of thing. Like individual strands... Not a piece of cake. Far from a piece of cake. That does look nice when you're done in the end. So, yeah. Just gonna keep progressing with each parts of the hair. And then this part. Sort of like quick, very small, quick dashes. And then you'd have the hair going like this. It's also good practice if you want to try and do different types of shapes. Because you have to think about everything in a three-dimensional way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
I keep forgetting that my camera is turned off because I keep doing head movements. Yeah, it's okay. It means like I don't have the camera on because I'm the. It keeps trying to use my USB camera, and I mean my laptop camera, and I'm like, nope. There's tape on that. <laughs> you dumb machine. <laughs> That's not gonna work. Whenever I see videos like this, I keep thinking thinking of Domix. Hey, yeah. He's my favorite YouTube animator. He's yeah, that makes is really cool. Eh, everyone has their own different kind of things. And to me, it's like, nah, I can't treat everyone the same. Okay, he has different types of humor, and everyone else has different types of humor. Now, I'm not going to say he's a jerk, because he makes one particular video, and some people can't help certain things. <laughs> it's like everyone has different perspectives, and so that's how he happened to understand it. I love and, him, um, but... It's a love-hate relationship. <laughs> yeah. It's real, that's really what it is. Now, this is where it kind of gets a little hard, because I have to make the strokes a lot longer and a lot straighter, because this is where the hair is a lot straighter. And you always got to remember that the hair is going to also go behind the ears. Which I shouldn't be afraid of drawing it, because it's like, it's not, you see, I'm drawing through it. It's not affecting the ears at all. It's not going to affect anything at all. And I'm like, it's just out of habit that I think it's one layer when it's not. <laughs> so sometimes you gotta get out of those habits. But it's like, see? Just, you can just draw through it nice and easy. And it's not gonna get on anything else. Easy peasy, rice and cheesy. Mm -hmm. And there you go. So and we're to just any getting. Meet the to... Robinson fandom, fandoms out there. Yes, it was Meet the Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get the next part. Which is the sort of highlight. I keep wanting to go into all the symbolism behind her kimono. <laughs> I have a question. There's a white part on the reference. And I'm like, is that supposed to be there? Or was that forgotten? Because I found it kind of stand out a lot. White part? On the kimono, like this part here. This was actually white in the reference. Not I probably just it, forgot it. Because, yeah, I'm like, it looked like it kind of stood out and it didn't really fit in with everything else. And I'm like, to me, I, I was thinking that this color, which is the black color, would have been a better one because it's more of the accent color. Yeah, I also made this three years ago, so... It was a long time ago, huh? Hey, it's <laughs> not as long ago as I met... Um, my best friend. My uh, dude best friend. <laughs> You're my female best friend next to me. My female friend. friend spent. <laughs> I'm my mom's best friend. I'm a lot of people's best friends. <laughs> I'm just happy that way, I guess. I'm very positive. And I'm also very reason, optimistic. And the whole reason why in the reference you see those white bits going into her hair is because in her realm, in that particular portion, mist tends to invade your personal space and mm. distort what you actually look like. So that's why that's there. Ah, very interesting. Well, here it's like it's not going to really be white sort of hair, but it's just going to be like highlights mm -hmm. and kind of layers of different texture. I actually like what you're doing with it. I never really thought her hair is purple, and then I look back at it, and it makes more sense than anything else. Mm -hmm. It's like you got to learn that even black hair, when you're drawing it, it has a bit of color in it. Any sort of hair type has a bit of color hair in it. Like, if you see anime hair, anyone that has black hair normally actually has raven blue hair. Or a example, tinged sorry. purple hair. Yep. So it's like, it's not black, black. It's actually actually a colored black so and the same things is with whites it's not going to be a pure white white actually when you cut shade it and everything it has a lot of color in it 50 and shades so of gray <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah so it's like like if you ever see anyone do landscapes of snow 
you see that there's lots of blues, purples, sometimes pinks, sometimes yellows. There's a lot of color. So yeah, it's like snow isn't just white, it's also colorful. I love how Frozen discreetly did that at the beginning. They showed that the snowflakes aren't actually white, they're more blue and purple. But our eyes get overloaded by the color, so it comes off as white. Oh, that's an interesting take on it. I like that idea. To me, if you actually look at actual, like, zoomed in pictures of snowflakes, it's like a rainbow. Beautiful mess. <laughs> it's a rainbow. It's a rainbow symmetrical, just beautiful thing. <laughs> the unicorn threw up in <laughs> rainbows. I'm sorry, that was rather gross of me to say. <laughs> it's alright. <laughs> and everyone's thinking, Toe Mikey is so weird. <laughs> I'm crazy and giggly. <laughs> I'm a derp that's giggly and very happy almost all the time and extremely hyper and talks a lot. <laughs> it's not Vic Mignogna, it's Vic McDerpaderp. It's a derp. Dodd Habercorn, it's Dodd Hapercorn. Yep. <laughs> oh, my eye. Ah. <laughs> this is what glasses does to you sometimes. It's just like your eyes just go <laughs> against you. Yeah. To me, this way, though, is like it's a very long way to do hair. It's very time consuming. Agreed. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, I'm tearing up. My eye just <laughs> doesn't want to agree with me right now. Ugh. It's just like, nope, I'm going to tear up and sting you. Oh, the brain overload. Ugh. Well, if I could actually manipulate your screen for you, I would. I keep thinking that I can, and I go to draw, and I think, nope, nope, not my screen. <laughs> it's because it's full screen mode and everything, so it's like you get to see the whole thing. I need to actually re-darken it because I put way too much highlight. So you can see that you can actually... Uh, you can always go back and add a bit more darkness or a bit more... to keep it from like over-brightening each other. See? Mm-hmm. Because it's like, there's such a thing as having a little too much, and like, I don't like it when I have too much, or else it's gonna be a little too shiny. And it's like, your hair's supposed to be kind of blackish, ravenish, not this brighter version. So it's meant to kind of... I don't mind it. It's, I think it's very cool. I'm actually very flexible when it comes to Asuka, because she's young and she can change when she g gets older and such, so this could be possibly what she could look like in the future like 50 years so yeah she wouldn't have mentally aged that much but her body could have gotten into different genetical things but you see how like I'm adding the darkness and where the it would be darker mm -hmm. so it's like uh, even though it's not gonna take away all of it I'm just adding some of it so that way it kind of just blends out a bit better. Like over here it'd be a bit darker because it's more towards the back of the hair. So I'm like I'm re-adding the dark colors. It's like, so it's also where the hair bun is. So it's like the hair bun is going to put a little bit of shade and darkness on it. Yeah. There you go, but see? So it actually looks pretty decent. I haven't done this in a while, personally. So it's like it's also me revisiting a style I haven't used in some time. It's cool. But yeah, it's a lot of overlapping layers. There's nothing wrong with that. Yep. And then, see, just turn it on and off. And it's always nice. And so I'm going to go to the next part, which is actually going to be the small pieces. Because it's a lot faster to do the, all the little small parts than going straight to the big parts. So I'm going to take the obichime, going to add a little bit of color. going to actually change this to be a bit more of an orange darker tone. Because I don't want it to be like green or whatever. 
Because it's like the current theme is kind of the warm colors. And because it's warm colors, I want it to stay as warmer colors. So it's like I don't want to add like blues or too much greens except for where she has like green eyes. That's about it. Yeah, that's where that's... she has green eyes is because her mom oh, has green eyes. I think I mentioned that in the last video, but I can't remember. Yeah, so yeah. It's like I want to keep certain themes together because it's like since this theme is mostly she has a lot of warm colors, I'm going to keep it that way so that way it sort of flows a bit better. I also want to add that she wasn't always a warm person. She used to be rather sadistic. So <laughs> she's gone through some major character development since the last time I drew Asuka. And yes, yeah. I pronounced Asuka, not Aska. It's just like, well, why didn't you add the U? It was three years ago when I started the role play at midnight. I made some mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> we typed a lot of things wrong, and then I'm like, ah, let's just go with it. Like, I used to type one of my characters' names, Tevin, as Tevin, when that actually is the name of a completely different character. So I'm like, eh, crap. <laughs> so it's like, I had to fix that, but I'm like, yeah, you can confuse things or get tired after a while. It's all accidental, of course. And now you see, it's like with the hair being the way it is, I'm going to have to change a little bit. Because I'm like, this looks a bit more like cell shading, which is not what I'm going for. It's like I have to make it look a bit more painted. Mm -hmm. So it's like you can use, which is the brush tool here. And the brush tool is meant to have like a certain kind of push for things. And it's actually kind of... I am familiar with the brush tool. That's yeah. one of my favorite ones to use. It's also a good blender. For those who don't know. Yeah, it's a good blender. I used to use the marker tool as well. That one's also a different type of like a blender. Like you see how it works? And it also adds a little color. Whoops. Also, be careful if you have colors right next to each other when you're using the marker tool. Because <laughs> it's going to blend those accidentally. And I'm like, uh, it has a wide blend range and that sucks. So do this again. Darken it again. Gonna lighten the airbrush a bit so that way it kinda goes gradually into a darker color so that way it's not gonna spread too much. Cause like the point is to have this kind of painted layer look. And then of course we're gonna add highlights. So we're just gonna brighten it up. I'm gonna go back to this kind of orange color a little bit color because like it kind of contrasts but it's like it adds a little bit of a uh, sort of glowy flare I also got a message to do uh oh it's gotten weird again huh uh Tamaki might have gotten cut off again that's okay I'm patient I can wait for her just working on adding these little highlight details to sort of add a bit more shine to the little bell and the little ribbon and the OBG me. And welcome back! Oh! It's showing a webcam now. <laughs> it's acting up so yeah. It's kind of freaking out. It's like there's two of you and yeah. Oh, whoops, my camera came back on. My bad. It's okay. So yeah, you're gonna be popped in for a little bit. <laughs> Oops. Oh well, <laughs> anyone who doesn't know what kind of shirt I was wearing, it's a shirt I got from elementary school. And it's very hot in my house, so my hair's up. Okay. <laughs> I'm not yeah. traditionally beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I'm just adding a little bit of a highlight color for the bow, and it's kind of I'm just kind of adding it a little bit messily. It's so that way it kind of has a bit of a shimmer shine. Makes sense to me. So that way it's like the bow kind of has a bit more of a glamour look than it's just being pure black. So it's like everything, every little things like this. It's like even if it looks a little messy, it's like it adds a lot to how it looks. Also, to those watching, 
Don't be afraid to take risks. There's always the undo button. Yep. That's the beauty of digital art. <laughs> you have the undo button as your best friend. And it's like, a, it's like a, have fun experimenting. Try things out. See what happens. And that's how you learn a lot of cool tricks. And those who, have, who do traditional art, invest in a light box. It will become your best friend. But that's a story for another day. <laughs> yeah, Lightbox is really great, and technically when I was doing the sketches earlier, I was basically emulating a Lightbox, but digitally. It's just by changing the opacity so I could trace over it with the outline layer. Okay, so here's some tips about if you're doing any gold-ish colored things. It's going to be whites, there's going to be browns, there's going to be tans, and there's going to be yellows. This guy actually has a lot of inner colors in it when you're doing gold anything. I was actually personally very surprised when I learned about this. I'm like, oh, there's a ton of colors in here. And so it's like you got to get really into the colors. I see all those see? pixels, and it makes me want to watch Wreck-It Ralph. <laughs> yeah, even if they're just tiny pixels, it's like they actually are a lot in these tiny pixels. And so you see I'm adding a brown right now. Mm -hmm. And this brown is to help because it's a golder. It's a golden color. And so I'm going to add another, a little bit more brown. And remember, if you want to keep the brown from like not turning into like a red brown, you have to move this here, which is like the saturation of what makes mm -hmm. it gray or dull or whatever. This is also a good exercise for those people who like to draw cookies. Yes, it kind of looks like a fortune cookie right now, but that's <laughs> until I draw the highlights. And so I'm going to actually turn it into a yellow. I'm going to brighten it up a bit. Let's add a little bit of yellow. I'm going to go over here. And then I'm going to add white. And it seems a bit drastic, but trust me, worth doing. It helps. Yeah. And then when you zoom out, see a little shiny bell. But I'm going to sort of fix this a little bit because it looks like it's a bit too protruding and it doesn't really work out too well. So just so you can easily fix colors. And the button is useful. Uh -huh. Or you could just do a quick fix like that. See? A little bell. And it's all shiny. So that's kind of like a quick take on the end of the bell. So we're done with the OB Jimmy which is awesome. And now we can work on the OB. And I'm going to switch my tools to the brush tool actually because that's going to work out a little better. And uh, there's different things you can do with the brush tool. I'm going to pick a brush shape for this because Oh I yeah, like I was about to have... bring that up. Yeah. Like, there are bunches and tons of different brush strokes that you can use. Mm -hmm. It's like I was just using basics for certain things, and I'm like, that's kind of my default. And I'm like, you can always go down here to pick other things. Like, I'm going to go with bristle, bristle, or and I might switch to a flat in a little bit. That always confused me. Airbrush and bristle. How can you do that? It's an airbrush. It doesn't have bristles. Yeah, this is the airbrush. Of course, it's airbrush. And then this is the brush tool, so it's meant to be more for if you have patterns. And brush patterns, etc. So I'm going to add um, a little red, darken the red. And the thing is, is that it's going to be a bit light, so it's like if you want to really make it noticeable, you got to darken it a lot and sort of just brush and smooth this out. And if you have like anything like this, which is the little texture shapes for the OB I made earlier, you got to also remember that these are going to have a little bit of depth to them. So you can brush a bit of texture and sort of just darken a bit and brighten them and darken them and just keep doing this repeatedly. It's a lot of repetitive stuff. But you see that it's worth doing these kind of shapes. And so this is where I'm like a bit more painting styled. And I'm normally not a painter. I'm kind of far from doing painting style, but it's like, it's again, different things you try out and learn how to do and have fun with it. 
and also people who do traditional art and do paintings and stuff. You can do or it digitally. It's just learning that you don't have to have as much control over your stylus as you have to have the control over your paintbrush. That's something yeah. I learned. When you, that's why I respect any traditional artist. Because a traditional artist has the most steadiest hands ever. It's like for a digital artist, you can be a little bit more carefree because, of course, you can fix things and whatnot. But it's like when it comes to traditional art, it's like a lot more work. A whole lot more work. And also note that I'm making it really dark where the OBG mate is because it's going to make a shadow. Mm -hmm. It's pressing against it, so it's going to make a bit of a shadow. And again, I'm going to darken it again. And it looks really dark, but it's because it's, I'm going to be adding it very lightly. And then when I pass over it again, it keeps getting darker and darker. It's kind of like actual brushing. It's like you got to do a lot of passes over it before it gets really dark. Also, um, some artists think that at this point, when you've done the outline, done the base color, and you've gone to shadowing, it's not okay to add in extra details. It is okay to change your... Outline. Yes, you can change the outline. Like, I've learned to actually add color to my outlines sometimes because it actually looks a lot nicer when you add a bit of color to them. It kind of blends better with them. And so don't be afraid to change things. It's like it's not going to be everything shouldn't be just in the line drawing. And it's like you can break outside of the lines and paint over because actually a lot of professional work which looks very beautiful, they paint over the outlines. I bet you anything, a lot of them paint over the outlines. And so, yeah, break out of doing the outlines like that, and I'm like, I'm just keeping in it so that way it stays nice and clean and neat. But it's like you can always go outside of it. It's not a problem. That's why the saying is, color outside the lines. Yep. I keep getting afraid that I'm talking too loud. <laughs> it's okay. It's gonna it goes back and forth a little bit, but it's really fine. And for me it's like you can see when it switches from me to you. So it's like that's when whenever you see that it switches to you, then it's focusing on you, basically. It's also kind of a little reminder of what the original one looks like compared to yours. <laughs> yeah. So it's like you get to see progression changes and differences. And so I'm going to add one more kind of dark layer because I'm like, I just want it to look a bit more pop out. Because it's like it takes a lot of layers to make it kind of pop out between what's the shaded part and what's the bright part. It's like I before, when I back, way back then, when I was a lot more novice with my digital art, I used to make everything a bit too soft, and you can't really tell the difference between what was shaded and what was normal. And yeah, so it's like you gotta sometimes make it a bit more obvious that this is the shaded part, and this mm -hmm. is not the shaded part. <laughs> And for any of those with Vulcan hearing and hear the scratching in the background, that is my kitten, Ellie. She's scratching up against a box, and so that's fine. Yep, that's the kitty. <laughs> Adorable kitty. That, the one that was mewing in the first video. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> the attention hog. The attention kitty. I didn't even know that was a kitty. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice right away. I'm very slow. I'm like, I thought that was a person. Nope, it was a kitty. <laughs> well, I make real realistic cat noises that didn't come out right. <laughs> I make meows too. That happens. <laughs> Anyways, it's, I don't want to get into that or else I'll be very derpy. So now I'm adding a highlight, which it's very soft at the moment. And you can see that it's adding a little bit of a light satin shine. This is kind of what's, it's actually kind of like semi satin actually, because there's different types of fabric looks, and so this is kind of like semi satin where it has a little bit of a light shine to it, but it's not like overwhelmingly shiny. Satin is when it's really, really shiny. Also, the difference between a yukata and a kimono are, they're not drastically different, but they're folded in differently. They're also made out of different material, 
And yukatas are generally worn in the summer and are meant for swimming. Huh. I did not know that. You learn many things every day. <laughs> and for any of those who may see this and start raging in the comments that I'm wrong, do the research first. Yes, research before commenting, please. I do not approve of any comments that is said without knowledge unless you are asking an honest question. <laughs> I'm not into anything that's like, you know better, and I'm like, no, everyone has different opinions. I believe that everyone has their own opinions, and everything I say is my own opinion. Also, another note, um, when you're highlighting and shading, don't be afraid to color over the base coat. It's still there. People will be able to see it. Just because you paint over it doesn't mean it just disappears and you think you, that you just wasted your time. Mm -hmm. It's still there. Don't worry. Yep. You see, it's like I may be painting it over it right now. And so you see it's a solid thing. But it's not I don't have a copy. In fact, I have a complete duplicate in another file. <laughs> so, trust me. If I mess anything up, I can always go back and get it. Also, no, also something else. Save your work periodically. Yes, I still have that bad habit is that I do not do that. Never trust your programs sometimes. You should save very frequently. And if you have a shortcut, use a shortcut to save. Like for me, it's Control S and it saves. I think like, that's with everyone. I think that's the default control S. Yeah, so I don't do that often though, so I'm like, I should do that. But see, control S, and there we go. It just saved. And so you see, it's like slowly getting glossier, shinier, and having a bit more depth. It's I'm like gonna have to use this on my Spectra. Uh I'm having tr I was actually messing around with her eyes earlier, and I was having trouble because I'm trying to... I'm not trying to copy another style, just kind of adopt it slightly. And it's just... My style is kind of known for not having pupils. And it's just like, how do I have pupils but not have pupils? Yeah, it's not easy. It's like sometimes you can go without having pupils. It's like it's your own thing, and so, yeah. It's like sometimes I forget certain things and I'm like, ah, I just go with it. And like, for instance, I noticed something. My nose shapes have changed a lot. Like, you see this nose shape? It's actually very simple to how I used to do things. But it's like, if I bring out this other character, so you're going to get a little sneak peek of something that I'm normally not going to share with anyone. Yeah. So you see this particular character. If he has a... the lag stops. Yeah. There we go. So this particular character, you see he looks completely different from what I'm drawing right now. What I'm drawing is more simplistic anime. This is my retake on anime style by changing some things to have some small pieces and references to realistic style, but not completely. So yeah, my style has changed a lot since I originally used to do it. And I'm so sure this I'm is my being... own take on anime, but it's not a traditional simplistic anime. I'm sure I'm not the only one thinking this, but what is up with his ear? He's not technically one of the good characters. It's a bit of a spoiler. He's going to be one of those more of the bad guy antagonistic slightly characters. But I can't say any more about it because the story isn't even out to anyone yet. So, shh. I didn't show you that. <laughs> Your secret didn't show is nothing. me on YouTube. Whoever makes you this. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of people, but whatever. You stumble upon it, well, you know there's a little something. Go and welcome my sister into the video. Hello. <laughs> this is Material. Hello. She has her own deviant art on Tumblr and Facebook. And I use my Tumblr a lot. Yeah, she's Hello. terrified of posting her art on deviant art because she's scared someone will steal her art for themselves. She's oh, yeah, my mom used to be like that, too, when I started. I'm too lazy to color my stuff. You can post line art, and other people can color it for you. A lot of people do that, actually. She can't hear you, TK Chan. <laughs> oh, sorry. But yeah, that's my comment, too. 
Not annoying, so it's gonna it's gonna switching back and forth a lot right now. So anyway, it's gonna up the color a little bit, and I'm gonna actually tinge it a little bit more orange, and it adds a different effect. So you can see, it kind of changes the Make it a little more rich. What? No. Here the louder you talk, the more it switches over to my screen. That's really weird. <laughs> what is? Oh, no, no, no. You're talking to your sister? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Because I'm like, what? <laughs> no, 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 no. I was telling my sister that she needed to be quiet. Er. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. So you can see I'm adding a slightly orange highlight because it adds a little bit of a tinge of color. Mm -hmm. contrast. It's very small, but yeah. See? Very satiny. Very pretty. Of course, she turned on the water. <laughs> okay, so I can make, make your volume a little bit lighter, lower, so hold on. That would be great. <laughs> it's like on default right now, so I'm kind of lowering it now. There we go. Up, oh, JPEG pop! No, you didn't see that. <laughs> Julius Carcos? Julius Garcia. Oh. Wait, is that JPEG's real name? Yes. <laughs> I never knew that. I'm in trouble. <laughs> Let's just say I'm in trouble later. Because <laughs> he sometimes watches my videos and I'm like, oh, I'm in trouble later. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> And I feel bad that I haven't been talking to JPEG lately. I've just been so busy with sure, yeah, and emotional problems and all that junk. Yeah, yeah I go through things. I know, I went through like months and months of depression because of my school stuff. And I'm like, ugh. I'm happy I got out of it. That's the biggest blessing ever because I can be here for my family. Right now. And that's my highest priority in life in general. I am here for my family. I am support when they need me, and whenever they need someone to kind of like do other things, and that's what I've been actually doing. I actually have time to clean, to cook food, and etc. And cooking. keep my mom from going crazy art. bananas. Yeah, cooking, cooking is art. edible art. It's delicious edible art that I love. <laughs> I would love to learn how to cook lots of different types Tabitha, of food. Do you want to be in the video too? No, not particularly. I don't know what I would do in the video. Oops, did I say Tabitha? I meant Batiri. It's okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. We're going to slip up a lot. Very Especially yeah. when you anyway. look like the person. Batiri yep. is so obviously an alias. Painfully so. So, so is Tomiki. I don't sound Asian, not in the least. Batiri <laughs> isn't even a real word. I'm pretty sure Tomiki is a made up name. Like Mikey! Okay. It's a say now. Now that we're on that, the reason behind my name is because originally I had made it for my Gaia account, Gaia Online. I had wanted my username to be Tamaki, but someone had already taken that name. It was just like, so what is a way to make an original name, but it still be similar to Tamaki? So I added an I after the A, and that became my trademark, Tomiki. And so I actually, I was saying it how it originally was supposed to be. I was saying it Tomaki, <laughs> like it was supposed to. Pretty much, yeah. Huh, I had no idea. The more you know, oh, I switched to airbrush. I have a bad habit of doing that. <laughs> airbrush is my default, too. Don't worry. I'm yeah, sure I have a, a habit to switch. Oh. Something I was curious about, I noticed you had a crap ton of other brushes. Did you make some of those? Some of them are presets. Some of them are just there. I found them online or I set them up. Like this one's oil watercolor. This one's a different type of brush. This one's an acrylic. This one's, I don't know why it says paper and etc. And like my pencil is one of my favorites. And let me just make a new layer so I don't mess this up. So you see? It looks like actual pencil, sort of. Yeah, I'm familiar with all the default. The default stuff. ones. Uh, I just there was one I didn't recognize, but I can't find it. Um. 
Oh, uh, let me see. Pleasure. Let me show you. There's when you right click, it shows you all the different ones you have. So there's pencil, airbrush, brush, watercolor, marker, eraser, select brush, select eraser, bucket, and binary pen. And you can change any of these into something else, and sort of name them as other things. Like you double tap them, you can rename them. Cool. So it's like if you make one specifically for a specific lick, like. I have one right here, or is it down here? I have one that is called Mock Ink here. This one is called Mock Ink. I use it only for a very specific type of style of artwork I do. And you see how it has a very particular look? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see that. So, yeah. So that's oh, only for a very specific type of style. <laughs> it's just like Insta Freckle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, yeah. So I'm gonna actually move this a little bit this way, so it adds a different contrasting color. And Whoops. for those who don't know, I am ADD. I will get on different subjects. It's just how I am. Eh, I'm hyper. So we go well together. And I'm also <laughs> forgetful, so I wouldn't notice half the time. I wouldn't notice we changed the subject. <laughs> the ah, this contrasting personalities that go well together. Yes. Yay. Also, but you see, um, there's a lot of layers. Else. I know making it look you have okay. your colors right next to your layers. There is a way for those who don't know to switch those to the other side who are Oh yeah, a lot of people. Okay, so how you do this is that you cut it's, you click I don't know. I re don't quite remember how to do it. It's been a while, actually. I know that there is a way to do that. Hold on. I'll figure it out in a second. I got this. Okay, it's you click view, I believe, that relates to it or something like window. that. Window. Yeah, it's window, click actually. All different types and see where you go. Yeah, it's like show layout panel to the right. So it's going to move it this way. Click window. And she put color tool to the right, and now everything's inverted for me, which personally that sucks. <laughs> and so you can put to the left, and there you go. You have one on each side, and you can have the character in the center. And that's actually how I have it. Mhm. Mm and so this side's your colors and brushes and everything, and over here is your layers. But to me, I like everything having to lens to the left side because I used to have a habit that I actually would do that do basically something like this. So let me undo that. And I'd do this, I'd put it to the side here, and then I'd put someone's chat over here. And then I would actually draw while I have a chat open over here. And so that's why I have it like this, because that way I can have this actually is in the center for me. There's a chat over here, and then all my tools are over here. So that's yeah, why it's like this that. for me. That's how it is for me, because I happen to chat sometimes when I'm drawing. Whoops! Nope, don't Sometimes, do that. Sometimes, <laughs> more like all the time, darling. <laughs> to do now, I'm adding highlight, highlight later, and you see that it takes a lot of strokes for a painted style because you're gonna do layer by layer by layer by layer by layer to add all the shines and everything. But it does look nice. But so I always know that do, it's like, worth the time. It is okay to go in with a light shading. You don't have to go into extreme detail like this. Like I am doing. <laughs> yeah, I'll be showing that alternative kind of look in a bit. Because I'm like, I know people would like the easier route. And like, this is just how I feel like doing it right now. It's not the way that you would normally do it. But I'm like, this is just how I feel like doing it right now. I feel like a nice painted style in contrast to all this other stuff I've been doing. Because I'm like, I haven't actually been doing shadings. Like, some of them I haven't been doing shading. Like, the one I showed as an example, it's like I haven't been doing shading for that one yet, or any other one, so I'm like, I need to shade some things. Yeah. And it bothers me sometimes if I leave something unshaded, but it's like because they have to move on to another artwork. So at least it's colored. To me, I'm happy that at least it is colored, but it's still not finished, technically. And brighten it up some more. And do another layer. 
And to me, this also makes it look very soft in the shading is because you're doing slow gradient changes in color while still keeping this sort of painted look. So yeah, it's very gradual and it's like, it won't be severe until I do something like this. Then you see it's a very big change in the highlight. It pops out a lot. See? Yeah. And technically, I'm going to actually see if I could try to add a bit of a pattern. I might not because the simplicity of it is one of the beauties of a kimono. But it's just things I experiment with once in a while. And I am flexible with this. Yep. So, yeah. One of the best things you can do for an artist, by the way, which this goes for any artist, is that try not to be overly picky and go outside of any artist's style. If you commission an artist... You commission them for the particular style they're able to do. Don't ask for something out of, like, it must exactly look like this anime or whatnot unless they're able to do that or they're okay with it. Because otherwise, it really takes out the fun and creativity away from the artist. And it makes doing the commission more of a chore than actually something they can enjoy. So I've it's just a little that plot. problem before, and it's very annoying. Yeah, it's like you don't want anyone asking for something... You just cannot do. And it's a bit actually offensive because you feel bad that you have to turn them down because you can't do it. They ask too much. And it's like everyone's got to understand that everyone has different understandings and levels. And so we need to be sure we're on the same pace and the same track whenever we're doing something. And you can see here I'm kind of like doing this a little bit faster. So that way it's like you can see it better. Yeah, I'm actually experimenting with that painting style on my Spectra skirt. I think it's yeah, contrasting with the style that I have currently. Oh well. Undo, undo, undo. You see, even I make mistakes. <laughs> and so it's like it's all fun to try things out once in a while and just see how it goes. And it's like, but stick to what you're comfortable with for now. And then you can experiment every so often. And don't always just go, don't completely change your style just because someone says so. That's, that's just, just no. Don't do that. Even if it's like popular, it's like you, you do your own thing. And the only time I say an exception to this is if you're kind of in a pinch for money, then that's the only time because people like a particular style when they want to commission people, which sometimes sucks for me because it's like I have my own style and unless someone likes that style, I'm not really going to get paid. So that's why I have to learn another skill set just for commissions. But to me, this is something I'm comfortable with. It's not completely out of what I'm used to, but it's a bit different from my normal. It's very calming because I'm like, I haven't done stuff like this in a really long time. Honestly, so long, it's like I almost forgot <laughs> that I do stuff like this. It's like it's been a while since I've treated anything like it was one layer, and that's why you go back and forth. Is because you're treating everything as gradual layers, like actual painting. You're retrain treating it your as if it's... Yeah. You have to retrain your brain that sometimes it's a perspective of digital, but sometimes it's also the perspective of just traditional kind of style, just a modernized digital take on it. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to go look at that now. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, that's okay. That's actually nice. Mm -hmm. Very Not that painted. I was thinking it was going to be bad. It was, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's okay. I understand. It's like some things, it's like when you go outside of something you're not used to, it's a little scary at first, but once you do it and you see that actually it's pretty fun, then just go for it. <laughs> Um, so now I'm going to do the same over here. And it's again, it's like you start very lightly. And now, the, if even though it's digital, understand that your pen has pressure sensitivity. It if will know if you're pressing really hard like this. 
if you get the correct type of Psy. However, if you download the crappy people's yeah. stuff, I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like they got lazy with the free downloads and stuff, and they didn't include the pressure sensitivity in the Psy. That sucks. So actually, this is that a Psy that is a very special type of Psy that is made to be English, and it also has the ability to do PNG transparency. Yeah, so I very that particular I that. So yeah, I can share you the link for that in a bit. Because you have to normally ask the guy on DeviantArt to do that, but I saved the note that he sent it to me, so that way I could reference it for later if I need it or if I lose it. And so it's also what I you did is that I also send it to JPEG because he wanted to have it, but I'm like, I don't want to hassle the guy and message him again, so I'm like, I'll just use the note he sent me before. And it just links to the same thing. Cool. So it's like, I'll let you have it later. And it's a nice take on site, and it's really helpful. And actually, I need to make that darker. Darker. And it's like, here's where you got to be a little careful. Because you see that I'm slightly going over this. So it's like, this is where you got to be a little bit more tender with your back and forth shading and darkening and whatnot. And I'm sure it's all like, the traditional artists out there are cringing for you. <laughs> yeah, it's like, when you go over something, it sucks. When you're a traditional artist mess up something and it's a very sad day <laughs> but like, another thing is that traditional artists learn the technique of improvising when you mess up you can find a work away around it that's like, what I see a lot of professionals do so it's like just work away around it make it a part of the art make it unique and it's one of a kind now And again, at least I'm using the base colors and I'm going darker and not lighter. Because normally, whenever you do traditional art, you must do your lightest color first and then periodically get darker and darker and darker. That's how it kind of goes. From what I remember. Well, when I do digital art, I always start dark and then go light. Because yeah, it's you like, can always make something lighter. But... Mm -hmm. It's with digital art, you can be a bit backwards, and that's how I am with the digital art at times. But it's just because I'm doing a painted style right now, is that why I'm doing it more the traditional way? But yeah, I'm normally pretty backwards. It's like I always do my shading first, and then I do my highlights. Because then I can see where the shines are, and where I want it to be bright, and where I don't want it to be bright, and etc. Makes my life easier. There's one thing I do really want though. Artistic wise, mm -hmm. if I mention anything that I really, really want to get, is a Cintiq Companion. I adore those things. I want to get one so bad. It is the most awesome thing I've ever seen. It's a what? A Cintiq Companion is one of those screen tablets. They're a screen type drawing tablet, but they also are, the companion type is to go. You can take it with you anywhere. Kind of like a computer. And so it's a to go professional drawing tablet with cameras and all this other stuff. And there's two types. There's the Cintiq companion and the Cintiq hybrid. The hybrid is like Android-esque. And so it has about 12 hours of battery life and you can get at and whatever and then the other one is a computer computer it is like an actual computer and it has Windows 8 on it and it's like having a tablet computer except you can draw on it and it's awesome <laughs> <laughs> it's like I just, money. yep it's very expensive though it's like 2000 something you're gonna drop a lot of money on that but it is worth it if you want to get very professional very worth the money in upgrading to having a Cintiq Cintiqs are really great. I've never had one, but I'm like, I just, yeah, they're just really good. Their pressure sensitivity is a lot higher than what I have, which is a Bamber Create, and I'm like, I can make pretty great art, and a lot of people can make art with whatever they have, but it's like, once you kind of want to do it in a very professional graphic design profession, then it's like, you do have to upgrade some of your art, and you have to learn 
new tools of trade. Like, eventually, I may not be a fan, fan of it. I will have to learn how to use Photoshop and stuff. It's not my thing, but you gotta sort of go and change with what's common in workplaces. And it's easier to just switch to something that you know you can use any workplace because a lot of places provide it, then be very selective to one thing and it's going to be a bit costly for them to switch to that. Well, I don't like Photoshop because the colors look mm -hmm. so cheap. Yeah. That's why I refuse to use GIMP and I'm sorry for all the GIMP users out there. It's just... If you make something good out of GIMP, then you're really good at it, but I'm like... It's not for everyone. Like, I tried GIMP. It did not work with my computer. It actually wouldn't open or anything, so that's why I didn't use it. But I'm like, everyone has their own way of doing it, and I'm like, if you learn how to use this program and it works for you, that is great for you. But it just didn't work for me. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> it's like, it works for you, won't work for me, that's fine, we move on with our lives. The I may best do way I can describe GIMP is the style you're doing in it right now, this drawing, mm -hmm. that's pretty much what you have to deal with with GIMP all the time, is this particular style, extremely dull. Oh, you can't really break out of it? To me, if you, this is your trade, this, it, GIMP is perfectly fine. This painted style that a lot of people who are really professional artists take months on doing art pieces and they do this type of style and like that's perfectly fine. It works with you. But it's like to me, it's like if you want to do anime or certain things and you need more options, I don't suggest it. Yeah. I mean, hey, and, it's mm -hmm. good for a beginner program, I guess. And it's free and it's like to dip your toe in digital art. Mm -hmm. But I saw my sister using it and it was just like denied. It's not easy. <laughs> like, yeah, also, so. something else for the everyone out there who have like Google accounts and stuff like that and Google Drive, don't use their drawing program. Oh yeah, that, that's not good. It sucks. It sucks a lot. I don't like it. It's it's nah. I you know me and JPEG have always wanted one thing, and if anyone ever creates it, we would love you forever. We would we would have loved to have a co. It's like co-op paint tool side, where two people can work on one painting together. And to me, that would be awesome. But it's really hard to do, and you have to really know your programming to do it. But it's like, if anyone can ever figure this out, I would be so happy. Because <laughs> me and JPEG have certain art styles, and sometimes it's like he draws a line art, and I can color it. Or I draw a line art, and he can color it. And if we just do that in Lifetime, it saves us so much trouble. Or if it's just for fun, then it's also fun just for the two of us. But it's like, you, you can't do that. I have not found a program, unless you probably have to pay for it or whatever, that we could use and work really good on it together. Sex. Yeah, me and, and the thing too. is that I would love that kind of thing too if I'm teaching any type of art. Because people can actually use it while I'm actually doing it. So they can slowly kind of work out the kinks and I can help them out while doing it in real time. So yeah, it's like some things in technology that are there but not quite where I'd like it to be yet. You're getting there but not quite. Also, if you're faced with a choice between Google Drawings and Paint that comes with your computer, pick Paint. paint. Every time. Paint has an eraser. Its sensitivity is it is probably a hundred a hundred times better than with Google, and it has better color options. I, I could probably make a whole video about why Paint is so much better than Google Drawings. Yeah, <laughs> but you said that's like that's bad to actually have to have a comparison. Yeah. It's down. bad that I even considered Google Drawings as a program to start using. Nah, don't, don't suggest it. 
I don't recommend it to anybody. Best thing about digital art, if you have like little pieces you miss, you can always go back and do them. Very simple, very easy. Yeah, actually it looks a lot nicer than even I could expect. This is <laughs> what I consider it happens. It just happens. That's how I consider some types of my artwork, where I just start drawing it, it turns out however, and I may not have had complete control over it, but it looks nice. Oh That's no. Amazing. Oh lag. Oh lag, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. Okay. <laughs> Deep breath. Let me control Deep. save right now. <laughs> Because I'm like, every time it freezes up, I freak the heck out, especially when I'm doing an artwork and I'm like, I just finished something for a long period of time. <laughs> I will panic attack. Xanax. Beautiful stuff. Eh, I don't take too many pills. All I have, the only pills I've been taking very recently is Reprofen because I have my wisdom teeth are growing in. It sucks. My wisdom teeth are growing in too, but I take so much medicine. You don't notice? I have to, but to function, I have to take so much medicine. Eh. Also, but for yeah. anyone who has IBS and uh, stomach hernias, ask your doctor about 800 ibuprofen. Because outlets like art and singing, it's not enough. Hmm. Lots of medical stuff that I not, I don't know personally myself, so yeah. <laughs> Again, something I could probably make an entire video about. Yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? The internet is filled with things already. Why not add a little more? I probably learned more about IBS and stomach hernias than the average doctor. Mm -hmm. I know probably more than my GI doctor does about my conditions. Which is sad. Interesting. Yeah, that's true. I find it very sad whenever that I know more than the professional. That makes me a little bit sad and it makes me a bit concerned. So, yeah. For me, personally, it's like if there's any type of professional person and it's like you can work things and get better, but please do so because I fear any issues for everyone and yourself if you don't understand certain things. That's just from speaking from some recent events that happened. And I'm like, Bleh, what the heck? Yeah, I hold no shame in talking about my conditions. It just says, hey, I have nothing to hide. They might as well know. I'm kind of gently smoothing it out right now. Yeah. Smooth it out. But I don't want to use the blend tool because if you use the blend tool, it's going to get very smoothed. This is what will happen if I use the blend tool. Everything's going to smooth down like this. You could always uh, tone down the dilution, and that could help. Yeah, it's, a, it's like if I mess up my blend tool too much, then I'm like, oh, no. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, no, that's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted at all. Yeah. But it's like you could use it very lightly, like in certain areas. It's not too bad, but you can be very gentle with it. See? It's like it's a bit softening, and it's like you don't want to use it too much, because the point is to keep that painted look. You don't want it to get too soft. Although it does make it a bit more depth and satiny. It's like for this particular look, it looks nice, because it has this these lines and this painted thing. And so it's like, I'm only using it very, very lightly right now, so that way it doesn't take away the satin that I worked hard on making it look like. Because <laughs> it sucks when you put so much work and then in one stroke you kind of just booped it up and you're like, ah, damn it. <laughs> it's like, so it's like soft, I'm very lightly. I instantly thought of soft kitty, warm kitty, warm kitty, happy, happy kitty. kitty. I just know the song for no reason. And I don't watch Big Bang Theory as often as I used to anymore, so derp. <laughs> it's like I just oh, remember I that one song. Spoilers for uh, Big Bang Theory watchers out there. But I want to talk yeah. about it. Yeah, so I haven't watched it in a while. <laughs> uh, so many things. 
Just a. I wish I want a, I want a YouTube channel that is Crash Course fandoms. It is like an episode that's a Crash Course to every fandom. Doctor Who fandom Crash Course, anything. <laughs> so you learn what's it about, and you will understand what people are talking about. <laughs> like I know. That it's kind of is... like you know the for dummies book series, but it's like. Crash course, please. Because <laughs> not everyone knows every water, fandom. But I don't know what Homestuck is. All I know is that there are trolls and that it's a huge... Uh, oh, Homestuck. There. I know what that is. Yes, it is a huge fandom. And I do know what Homestuck is. It's kind of like this webcomic series that is also sometimes slightly interactive. And sometimes it's all these other things, and sometimes it's a mini game, sometimes it's an epic cinematic. But it's it it's Homestuck is once you start, it's you gonna commit to a long, long story. Whew, it's a really long story, and actually, I'm gonna show you this YouTuber that is my greatest catch up to learning Homestuck. Because it makes it entertaining to watch. Because it's there is tons of dialogue. There's tons and tons of text. And if you're not into reading a lot of text, you can get very bored. So this is the best alternative to get into it without getting extremely bored. Because other people are reading the text for you. So it's like you're getting into the story without actually having to read it. It's great. I love this channel. I just gotta bring it up real quick. So, yeah. I love Definitely. how when I'm not here, you stay all focused on the drawing, but boom, one session with me, we're talking about home stuff. Yeah, it's just I like to give people options for things. And other, I think it's in the other implants. It's called Collab HQ. And these people are made homestuck stuff. And well, there's a few random little things. The series is called Let's Read Homestucks. It all the parts and all the acts, and it's a bit slow once you get caught up it is a little bit slow because it takes them a while because they have like tons and tons of people that collaborate to voice act these things but yeah so this is the channel I'm gonna bring it over here this is collab HQ and so you can just search collab HQ on YouTube and go click playlists and they got read paranatural they got Let's read homework, act this, act this, and act whatever. And so just click this. Or you could click the Let's read homestuck in general. And it'll go through the entire homestuck thing. So it's like you click this, you get all of act one. You click this, you get all of act two. You click this, etc. And it's it makes it entertaining because everyone has a voice. And it's fun. And it's like it just makes it a lot entertaining to watch. Again, it's like it's a really long thing to go through all the text at first, and it's a bit challenging. But when you get past the challenge, it's very entertaining. But this is for people who want to get introduced to it a little bit faster. Then this is a great alternative. Yeah, I need to put Thumper in his. Car. So yeah. I'll be right back. Thumper. Okay. But yeah, so that's something if you want to get into a Homestuck stuff without extremely explaining your mind. Okay, so back to the artwork. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Alright then. So we already did the clothing mostly. We're going to be doing another part of the kimono, which is these parts. This is the little bands, and then this is the inner kimono. Normally the inner kimono is white, but for this particular character, it's going to be colored because it looks nicer. And so again, we're going to be going back to using the brush tool. I'm using bristle. And you can see all the settings here. Again, if you want to see any of these settings, I see everything, just put it into full screen and HD. That's it. 
full screen in 720, you'll see all the settings and everything. And even if, if it's a bit higher than your computer, I try 40 or 30, but it's going to be a little bit blurry. And I apologize for that. Because YouTube is weird. Jeez. So yeah, I'm going to go to the purple, add a little color, darken it. And then I'm going to brush in this purple as to start shading the line. I just oh, drew my tablet whoa. with a real pencil. <laughs> yeah, I almost did that once too. And trust me, don't do that. Try to avoid doing that. And yeah, it's like it looks like I'm recoloring it. And like slightly, yeah, I kind of am recoloring it. That's because I think it looks a bit better. Thank you for announcing that to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I'll explain later. It's okay, I don't hear it really now. Okay. TK Chan is. Mm -hmm. Eh, whatever. I'm casual for today, so like. <laughs> Like, I, it's like when I chat with JPEG, which, by the way, if you haven't noted, known that I'm talking with JPEG now, he's gotten over the shiny day. So we're talking with each other now, which makes me happy. Okay, so I'm going to darken it a little bit more. And it's not easy to continue darkening with this kind of... With anything that's kind of represents black, it's a bit hard. It's a bit of noise on Tamaki's end. I might have to lower the volume again. Sorry. Mommy Sorry. is in a cluttered mood. It happens. This is sometimes why I don't like brush, where I substitute for airbrush, is when it's trying to blend the freaking colors. That is the only time I get grumpy. The only time I get really grumpy is when it tries to blend like the pink here. Also announced to YouTube. What? Also announced to YouTube. Okay. I'm just gonna mute Noisy. myself until my mom <laughs> is done cleaning or whatever she's doing. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, apologies for that. And it's, I don't consider it a big problem, but yeah, uh, whatever. Family things happen. But yeah, so I'm brushing in a purple, a slightly purple tinge to shading. And again, because this particular part is in the same layer, instead of being on a separate layer, some of the colors are trying to mix in, which is slightly annoying for me. But whatever, it happens. So again, just brush it like this and it's okay to go over your base layer because it's just a guideline to what you want to do feel free to go over it to add more to it to brighten the colors to make it look nicer and just have fun I'm gonna turn it down to my last degree of darkness that I can possibly do and or manage. And so here we go. And we're just going to overpass this slightly. I'm going to go over here. Now we're going to do a highlight and just do a tinge of purple again. Like I said, don't be afraid with the colors, it's going to look nice. Just experiment and see how it goes. All point is to have fun and try something new. And here's where I'm going to actually be a bit more firm on the blur tool because it's a bit of a peculiar sort of thing. So, yeah. A little more smooth out, and I still need to add a bit more highlight to this, so yeah. A little bit more highlight. Just a bit more. And again, re-adding the highlight 
brings back the paint look. So don't be afraid to do that if you want to bring back the paint look if you over blended. And there. Okay, we're almost done with this part. And then we're going to do the inner pink. And then the kimono should be done. Then we can get to the skin complexion. And this character should be basically nearing the end of the thing. The last thing would be possibly doing a background, but that currently is kind of optional right now. The main thing I was trying to teach here is doing the character. That was my main goal for this, mostly the entire thing. So yeah. And so now we're doing the darker pink. And keeping with this, we're just really lighting it up pink. I'm not sure if I want to even do a highlight. I'm gonna see how that goes, and that actually looks just like it. So we're gonna brighten it even more. And sort of just slightly pass on the edge. There we go. Very, very lightly done. We're gonna do it one more time with a brighter. Yeah, so it's very lightly adding this satin again. Okay then, so after doing that, I'm going to do one last part to the kimono. So I'm going to take these colors again. I'm going to darken this area down here. Because this is the inner part of the kimono. The inner part of the kimono is actually a different color to the outside part. So it's actually like a double-sided. It's a double-sided work. Yeah, I did use the airbrush really quick. But that's because I felt like it. And it's, it's a little bit faster. And you can do the same over here, but this is actually a detail piece. So I can actually go here, basically spot this around, blur it, and basically I'm done. And just add a bit of highlight color, like around here, a little bit here, blur, 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 and there you go. That's if you want to do something really, really quick, but um, that's kind of lazy. So, yeah. And so the kimono is done. Yay. Very beautiful. And now we should do the skin tone. And I'm going to bring back my background so that way I can notice the skin tone a lot more. And so you can see that there. I'm going to click this real quick. I might end up doing this part and I shall explain shell shading tomorrow. Reason to that is because it's kind of getting late, but I'll see how it goes. It really depends. And so here we go. You see that I made the skin tone a little bit peachy. And so that way, this way, it was a lot easier to do the skin tone. And so here I'm going to airbrush brushing, I want to actually airbrush very lightly with this style brush the skin coloration. She's very lightly. She's actually pretty pale. Actually, I'm going to change it to a slight purple and change this into a sort of purpley color as well. And it may be a bit weird. I'm just going to bucket it real quick. It sort of pales her out a bit, and I'm like, yes, it looks a bit weird, but there, there's a reason for this. So just relax. And sort of just airbrush it, because she has a very pale complexion. And for me to add color, for it to be a white, actually, which is a very surprising choice, I need to kind of mix these colors, as you can see there. So there's a bit of a purple. Huh, where'd that come from?
trying to figure out where that come from. Where did that come from? Oh, oh, it's on the outline. That mucked me up. Okay, so yeah, you just saw me tab through a bunch of layers. So anyways, yes. There you go, I fixed that. Whoa, don't want to do that. So airbrush purple here, gonna airbrush a bit of the purple here, and I'm gonna get, make it lightly colorful, like with the makeups and how the makeups kinda are, while also still adding a bit of blush color. And then I'm gonna add this blue and I'm gonna darken it, because it's darker. So it's going to be a little bit of a contrast. And we do that there. And it may look a bit weird right now, and you're like probably unsure what the heck I am doing. But trust me, when you play with colors a lot, it works. So do this here, do this here, and we're going to blur. A little bit. I'm gonna very gently blur this together. And you're gonna see what I did has made actually a very pretty light complexion to how she looks with just purples and blues. And if you wanna make it a little bit brighter, you can add some white. Just add a slight bright tinge of white to, to like really particular areas and there you go this is not hard at all it's very soft but it's like this that's the point you want it to be kind of gentle not overpowering just right I'm going to fix this a little bit here. So yeah, it's like when you're doing anything that's white complexion whatsoever, it's not easy. But yeah, just take a little time. A little bit of time. Worth it. There we go. So we're going to do the same thing again. going to do this to the ears now. And sorry if it's a little bit laggy. It's laggy because my computer just likes to be that way right now. It's kind of grumpy at me. Do I have any other things open? Nope, I don't. It's just one thing. So yeah, it's just being a little bit bipolar. My internet connection is a pain in the butt. So, sorry about that. Okay, I'm back. Mm -hmm. Finally. Welcome back to Maki. Uh, my mom yeah. started washing dishes, so I grabbed my meds, kissed her goodnight, and bolted to my bedroom. Okay. But yeah, so welcome back to Maki. And I'm right now working on her skin complexion. Complexion is everything in a woman's beauty. Yes. So you can see I'm actually using some small tinge of purples and blues with white for her complexion. Always fun. And if you hear blowing in the background, I actually have a fan going in my room. Yeah, it's okay. It happens. And I have to remember one thing, that the hair up here going to cause a light shadow, a very light shadow on the top here. So it's just a little tiny thing to remember is that whenever there's hair, there's also going to be shadows. So remember to add those. Alright then. Looks very nice for a very light white complexion. Has small amounts of color. 
and to make it pop out a little more, you can always add a bit more white. Kind of just. Gray. No, don't. I try to avoid grays. Grays kind of make it look weird. That's just me, though. I like grays. Grays are my best friend. <laughs> grays are good for a lot of other things, of course, but it's like when it comes to doing skin tones, it can be a little tricky. So, yeah. I'm going to take this blue, which is like a mixture of bluish. I'm going to work on the fingers because it's small detail, but you got to color these too. If you think about it, art is the perfect way to lie. <laughs> because the saying is lying, the best liar lies within the details. The best art lies within the details. Yep. Or lack thereof. Trust me, I take a lot of shortcuts. <laughs> There's little secrets in art, which when you learn them, it's like, oh, so you can do it this way too. <laughs> now you see that I'm adding this kind of shade thingy to the fingers? That's because there's a, your fingers are like that. It's like there's another section, and when it's at a particular angle, it's going to be a bit darker. So, yeah. Really quickly did the fingers. And I think she's almost about done. Yay! So I didn't I, think drawing her would be this complicated, but okay. Yay! That's for this particular type of look. It was really, <laughs> really complicated. I didn't so, think she was yeah. that complicated. I'm so sorry. That's okay. I actually enjoyed it. And so I'm going to do a little date stamp for her. Um, so, yeah, so that way I'm going to save this. And I'm going to keep the background this particular color, though, because it actually kind of complements her. And it makes her the... It looks nice for her. So, yeah, I'm not going to do a quite detailed background yet. I might do that tomorrow. I was wondering, actually, if you're going to include her crystal ball because that's the equivalent of a teddy bear for her. Hmm, I could real quick. Okay, a little quick addition, which is going to go in. Actually, I'll use the background layer for that. And so it's kind of bluish. Actually, it changes color. I, I can make it rainbow? Base. Can yeah, I make sure. it rainbow? Yes. Sure. <laughs> Sweet! Her crystal ball is actually connected to her state of mind. So if she's happy-go-lucky, it can actually be rainbow. Sweet! So yeah. Right now I'm just doing a quickie version of it. So you got to do the colors. Block in this giant circle. Because it's a crystal ball. It's round. If it's not round, I don't know what you're thinking it is. <laughs> I think you need to go look up what a crystal ball, ball, B-A-L-L, -L, looks like. If you don't know what a crystal ball is, hey, you said crystal. <laughs> yep. Okay. Doing spear shapes, kind of go like this. Yeah, I actually and had to look up a tutorial on this to draw the particular crystal ball, but this person didn't know what they were talking about, so I just, after that, I was just like, screw it, I'm going to do it all on my own. <laughs> Takes a little work. Spears are a little bit complicated to draw. There's a lot of smidget work, smidget work. And so, yeah... I'm trying to remember how you do it. A little bit. Because it's like, it's been a while for me, too. Since I've had to draw... It's like, the last time I draw anything spherical that's kind of like a crystal ball was when I did a bubble. And oh. bubbles are not easy. If you want really nice bubbles, bubbles are actually pretty hard. There are over two million hand-drawn bubbles in The Little Mermaid. <sighs> There's so much work I give... Tribute to anyone who does that much work. I volunteer as tribute. Okay. So. And for anyone who's into the Hunger Games fandom, I personally prefer the second movie over the first movie. For instance, if you gave me the option to watch Catching Fire versus the Hunger Games, I would choose Catching Fire any day. 
I guess it's like I prefer Effie's attitude better in the second movie than I do in the first one. Yeah, uh, character personality is a bit iffy with me when it comes to certain types of movies. It also could be that I read The Hunger Games and I had to do a book review on it for a project, so I'm so critical on the movie. That happens too. It's just like they got that detail wrong. They got that detail wrong. They completely skipped over this detail, and this detail was extremely important. <laughs> yep, that's how movies are sometimes. It's meant to be modernized and not always accurate, which sometimes pisses me off a lot. And I'm like, why make a movie of story if you're going to leave out a lot of the story content? I would have rather an animated series of the story than a movie of the story. Sometimes I conduct interviews with myself in a parallel universe where my role plays have become an anime, and I got to voice, uh, like, seven, eight, nine of my characters. Like, um, I had, uh, this one interview with myself where, in this particular universe, um, Miyazaki had decided to make a series of movies out of my role plays with Joseph. And I got to voice my characters, which was an amazing feeling, even though it never happened. Okay, so I'm going to actually do a little bit of a tricky thing. You know how I showed you about the multiply there? Mm hmm So you click multiply, get a color, and just airbrush it on there. But I'm going to make it lighter, so it's a bit more of a lighter rainbow. Because it's still a crystal ball, so I'm like, I think it should be a bit lighter. So that's going to be my start. Then orange. That looks kind of actually like yellow, but whatever. So my computer wants to be derp with me, so whatever. <laughs> it looked actually pretty orange to me. It could just be my screen, though. Dragon Tales! I forgot how the song goes. Oh, I love that show. Actually, kind of. I want that rainbow on. scale. I love the rainbow scale. I bet you that was one of the shows that fueled my love for dragons. I bet you anything. I just am obsessed with dragons. Dragons are awesome. <laughs> it does kind of look like the dragon scale, doesn't it? Yeah. And so, it's not done yet, though. I have to re add the white highlights. That's okay. A little more. Gonna add a light. I added a little bit of a light transparency to them. Because light catches and it goes on the other side and it's still. Mm -hmm. and doo -doo, doo -doo. Keep pressing the wrong blur today. It's okay. YouTube understands. Yep. And then actually want to make actually a few more. And kind of just go all the way around. And go a little bit here. It's not easy to do light or shiny things sometimes. Sometimes it's a bit hard. Around the striking layers. Okay, that kind of works. It's like me. I think the outside part needs to be wider. And then kind of blur. There you go. It's kind of a clicky crystal ball, so it's not perfect. It's okay. It's rainbowy. <laughs> All right then. So I'm gonna declare this saved for now, and tomorrow we'll do cell shading or a. Kind of, it's a mixture of cell shading and soft shading. 
and it's a lot simpler than this. A uh, hundred times simpler than this. <laughs> I may add uh, extra detail to this tomorrow too, which is coloring your outlines a little bit, because that adds a little bit of pop, but not right now. So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to say goodbye for today. And this is starting uh, to get annoying. <laughs> it's <laughs> like my thingy gets overloaded. Oh, well, that sucks. But yeah, so yeah, I was saying that I'm going to continue the cell shading tomorrow because it's 2 in the morning in for me and I need to go to bed soon. <laughs> Aww, okay. Yeah, so tomorrow I shall do the cell shading and maybe add a few little details here and there. I am going to put my signature in the corner here. I like to put signatures in the corner, but very light signatures, like almost transparent looking. I like kind of hiding it in it's kinda like the picture. It's kind of like watermark, almost. It's just like, ooh, where's Joe Mikey going to put it next? The dimmer you do it, the harder it is to see it, so it's like... So you know it's there, and if someone tries to steal it, mm. you can just say, Hey, look at right here. The bail. That one, I can't even see myself, so that wouldn't work. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to add a little bit of an extra one. She's going to go actually right here. I didn't realize you put them everywhere. I don't normally. I'm kind of lazy with that. <laughs> it's like I normally don't. Sometimes I forget to put signatures on things. But since it's definitely not your character. Yeah, that's a reason why. It's like if it's not one of my own personal characters, I do want to put a signature. Brighten that a little bit. A little bit more. Just add that little bit here. Now, and this is 100%, so that's the full picture size. You wouldn't see these guys unless you're really looking. And We're sometimes I like to be mean and just transparent them even more. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, make it more transparent. Why not? So yeah, I'm going to save this, and this is it for now. And tomorrow we're going to be doing a different type of cell shading, which is obviously easier than this. This is our time-consuming as heck. And yeah. We'll so, be back to you later. Yep. So, bye.